Hello, I'm Ryan Bloom. I'm Gracie Bethel with the Chillicothe Cavalier Coaches Corner. Each week, the Cavaliers media team will interview coaches from different athletic programs. Today, we're here with Coach Doug Pryor of the Chillicothe football team. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Glad to be here. So, after you came out as Frontier Athletic Conference champions last year, what's the general perception of your team? Do you guys think you have a target on your back, or do you still feel underestimated? Uh, you know, we basically, being Chillicothe and, um, you know, a bigger school within our conference, um, we, we typically, and, and also a bigger cool, uh, school, excuse me, for, for this region, we, um, we always feel like we have a target on our back, even if we didn't win uh, the Frontier Athletic Conference last year. Uh, even in my first season I've, in 2019 as, as head coach, I feel like you know teams were you know week in and week out gunning to, to beat Chillicothe. I mean that's any team any team you face, but I do feel like there's a little bit of extra uh, momentum you know headed towards our way each week, and obviously as coming back as conference champs, you know that adds to it, and I think that. The team has just really embraced it. I think they're, they realize that, the big picture, that um, they're feeling a lot of pride within the program. Um, because obviously, as uh, freshmen, um, you know, I believe it was, you know, they were able to see, you know, touch base with, with the previous, you know, tenure and, and, and things like that. And, and they, they know the, the expectations of, you know, Chillicothe football. And um, so, you know, there's always going to be that that pressure, but again, like I said, I think they've really done a great job of embracing it with their hard work ethic. Well, uh, last year, COVID restrictions impacted safety precautions before, during, and after games. What is the current game plan for keeping players and fans safe this year? So, you know, they're requiring, as coaches, us to wear the masks at all times. Uh, that's a district policy for, you know, staff members in general. Um, I'm part of the teaching staff. And, um, when we, and, and obviously the students in the building as well. Everybody who's in the building needs to wear a mask. And so for the players, when they're not working out, they're expected to wear masks. Um, this was just, you know, released today about the players and coaches. And so, I mean, it's only natural with us being all in the same district, even though it's, you know, we're talking about an athletic, you know, team. So for Friday nights, they're also encouraging fans to wear masks. Um, they are encouraging you know social distance as much as possible but right now as of right now this hour uh, at least we're able to have full capacity in the stadium which is very very exciting you know even though people will be um, encouraged to it's not a must but encouraged to wear a mask um, you know they you know the, the, the crowd will still have the ability to be at full capacity which is a great thing coming off of the 2020 season people on your team often talk about your yearly theme this year I've been hearing that it's culture what does that theme mean to you and your team? So every year, uh, the seniors, the rising seniors, when they're juniors, they're able to pick the theme as soon as the season's over for the next year. Um, and so it was interesting because it took the seniors, the uh, rising seniors, a while at that point, they were rising seniors, to come up with the theme. And they initially came up with culture immediately. Uh, but I didn't, it wasn't until maybe a few days later that they actually told me what culture stood for because they're probably trying to create obviously a great acronym um, a great meaning behind the acronym so that's uh, continuing ultimate leadership leadership teamwork teamwork excuse me unity repeatedly every day and I, I think that really just they probably heard myself and the coaching staff just keep talking about leadership 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 for the past couple of years it came into a fruition into 2020 and you know with the league championship and they just want to continue that legacy so i think that's where that really stems from they, they realize that it comes with strong leadership strong teamwork and then that all plays into the uh, you know unity of the team and to be you know going to form a brotherhood on friday nights and you know put the hard work in the off season there are plenty of talented players who graduated last year one of which was quarterback cam smith who will we see in a starting position this year? Uh, you know, it'll be Mason Dowdy. Um, he's, he's put in the work, and, you know, he, he's in a fortunate situation that when he, last year, he played some, um, especially in the early games, in crucial situ situations, excuse me. And so, basically, um, 
he's had some experience, and um, so we just feel like he's had a great off season, and he's really just you know throwing himself into the playbook, and the guys have really embraced him. I think it was, you know, it was a thing on our part that we couldn't have just announced him, you know, as soon as the season was over. But I think a lot of the guys knew that he was going to be the guy in that position um, coming in 2021. Who are your team captains this year, and why were they all chosen? So, um, team captains this year, Carson Francis, Isaac McCoury, Thomas Scales, Brandon Mankin, Xavier Doss, and Chucky Thomas. All chosen because of, not only, I, I think it was because of their athletic prowess, you know, they're all returning, returning starters, but some of them are, um, you know, multiple year starters. But all six of those guys have, have trained hard in the off season, and what I was impressed was in, in day one, you know, we started training in November and they just really embraced the younger guys in the weight room. Um, they just did a really, really great job with that. And that's when I started to think that, you know, we're in a great position. And, and that's really the, the whole senior class. I, I thought we were just really in a great position to um, start this push for a repeat of a league championship and try to have a long playoff run this year. We need to take a quick break, but we will return. We will be joined by a couple student athletes with the CHS football program. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Chill Coffee Coaches Corner. In the studio with us are Chucky Thomas and Xavier Doss. How have your guys' practices been going? Uh, you know, at the beginning, we was a little sluggish, but uh, we've been picking it up. We've been playing as a team, so I think our practices have been pretty good. Yeah, I think we've been working hard to uh, pick up when we mess up or when we, when we start off slow, we've been working hard to fix that towards the end. Uh, what do you hope to bring to the table for your team this year? Uh, like I said, the leadership, as us captains are picked, um, we're trying to bring, as I said, the team together. No, uh, There's no I team, like I said. Uh, we're trying to pick up everybody when they're down, uh, not trying to discourage anybody because no one wants to be discouraged. So just try and pick up everybody so we can win. Uh, as a senior, I hope to bring the leadership. And um, as a player, I hope to, uh, I look to give my 100% effort every play and do all I can for my team. What's it going to mean to you guys to not only have the cheer and band there, but the return of the C section this year? Uh, I think it will definitely up the energy. Uh, the energy of the games and have an impact on the players. Um, it'll make us play, I think it'll make us play harder, you know, having the people that we go to school with at the games, uh, knowing that we're representing them. Uh, like X said, uh, definitely the intensity being there of the Cavalier fans being by our side. Uh, being able to play for Chalkathi and play for everybody and let them enjoy us watching us play. Uh, your scrimmage with West almost canceled, but you had an inner squad matchup. How did that go? Uh, that went good. Just like Coach says, even if anything happens, we still got to put in that work. So, uh, you know, even if it's just us, we still go head to head with each other. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, even though the scrimmage was canceled, we um, took the opportunity to scrimmage each other. So, we got some great work in. Last year, COVID good. changed a lot of how your season went as compared to what's normal for you guys. What are you guys excited to bring back this year that you weren't able to do last year? Uh, definitely having a full schedule. I feel like if we had a full schedule, we'd be able to see what our potential was like. So uh, this year we'll definitely have the 10 games to see how we fully will progress. Um, I feel like everybody will have an opportunity to show what they got to the table since we only had six games last year. A lot of people they really didn't have the chance to show what they have, but this year I feel like we will. Yeah, like Chucky said, uh We'll have four more games than we did last year, plus uh, potential playoff games. Definitely have a, a lot more potential to um, show what we show we're made of, and a lot more, a lot more opportunities for those people to step up and play in games. Okay, now let's do a rapid fire question round. Oh, What's your favorite pump pump up song before a game? Uh, probably Blue Notes. No, that's a be re ready. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> Um, what's on the menu for your perfect team meal? Ooh, personally, I think spaghetti. I think chicken from um, Sag and Zoo. Oh, that's a good one also. What's your favorite post-game snack? <sighs> Ooh, uh, mm, uh, I don't know, honestly. Whatever, whatever's in my locker, yeah, what they give us. <laughs> <laughs> um, who are you sitting next to on the away game bus ride? Myself. Hopefully. 
Do you guys like the blue or the white jersey better? Uh, I like the white personally, but it's our school color, so I like both of them. I like the blue. Uh, uh, push ups or sit ups? Push ups. Push ups. Do you guys like turf or grass better? Turf. Uh, who's the funniest person on the team? Probably mm. Trevor James Banks. Big <laughs> <James> Banks. <laughs> who's got the best singing voice on the team? Probably me, honestly. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Honestly, I don't really know. I really haven't heard anybody sing. Probably Isaac, maybe. <laughs> uh, who's your number one fan in the stands? Uh, probably say my mom. If it's not my mom, I don't know. I have to question my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll say my parents. Uh, Brennan's dad goes pretty hard, though. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. All right, Chucky and Xavier, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, it's got to be on the show. Up next, we'll chat with a new member of the coaching staff. Don't go away. Welcome back to the Chill Coffee Coaches Corner. We are now joined by assistant coach Alex Grove. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Um, Coach, it's my understanding that you are new to the district. Could you tell us a little bit about your background and what brought you to CHS? Yeah, so although technically I'm new to the district, uh, I'm actually coming back. It's almost a homecoming for me. Uh, I graduated from Chillicothe uh, as part of the football program here. Uh, so it's been a very exciting uh, time to be back. I'm uh, looking forward to you know really kind of reciprocating the Cavalier way as I was brought up and uh, just showing some of the some of the young guys you know how. You know, we did it in my day, um, along with um, just uh, really being um, happy to be in the, in the school building as well. I'll be teaching ninth grade biology as well, so uh, I'll be here with the kids, uh, you know, within the building, and I'm just really happy to be part of this history. Uh, what special areas are we going to help the team? In? Okay, so I will be uh, I'll be coaching the quarterbacks. So as we spoke about, you know, quarterback Mason Dowdy, I've had to spend a lot of time with him as far as you know developing his his game, and then. On the other side of the ball, I'll be coaching the defensive backs. So, uh, you know, their job will be to stay back so that, uh, you know, the crowd's not saying, oh my gosh, who was burnt on that play? So, uh, that'll be my specialties, and then I'll also be uh, having some um, input into the passing game as well on offense. Who are some of the players that have stood out to you so far? Um, so, we had a, a player on just a moment ago, Xavier Doss. Uh, you know, that's a, a young kid that, you know, actually kind of sort of reminds me of myself. Uh, so I guess, you know, he's kind of stood out to me just because of his effort and his positive attitude and his leadership at all times. Um, and then, um, defensively, Maxwell Lee has just been unbelievable. Uh, you know, I coached him in basketball last year and, uh, you know, he was pretty good at basketball, but my gosh, he's a heck of a football player. He, uh, he really surprised me uh, when it came to his effort and his intensity and the way he plays. What are your thoughts for Friday night's matchup against Taze Valley? I'm feeling pretty good about Friday. Uh, obviously, Tays Valley usually brings a pretty physical team. Uh, I think you know they uh, obviously we can match their physicality, but uh, also you know we being Chillicothe, we have a lot of athletes, and I think we can utilize those athletes to you know with our speed and get to the edge and you know, really exploit uh, their uh, physical physical play with our athletic speed. Thanks for coming on today, Coach. All right, appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. You're uh, When we return, we will be joined by Coach Pryor for a look into the Cavaliers' home opener. We are back with head coach Doug Pryor. Seems like you have a really good group of players and coaches this year. Yes, we were very, very fortunate. We had. Um, you know, and it happens when you, especially when you win, win a league championship, um, you know, some coaches will decide, hey, I want to go try to conquer some new adventures and, and things of that sort. And other people try to pull your staff away because you've had success. Um, we had a quality staff last year, and we have another quality staff again this year, so we've been really fortunate. Your home opener this Friday is against the Taze Valley Vikings. What do you know about that team? Um, they are... Um, a power uh, running team, power football uh, team, just really physical, um, and they do their multiple option, multiple formation offense. I mean, they do some wishbone backfield. They'll go into the spread 
Um, they'll run everything at you from a uh, you know counter tray on the center to a speed option out of the spread. Um, they will chuck it deep. I mean, they, they they do everything to keep you on your toes. So they have some a lot of a lot of size, and you know they're always well coached. I mean, two years ago um, we went up there and. Um, I was I was impressed with what they had, and, and I know it'll be a really hard fought game for for either side whoever comes out on top. Okay, what kind of strengths do you hope to bring to the game? Again, just just being really disciplined as far as uh, fundamentally disciplined and knowing our scheme well. Um, our coaches do a great job. Obviously, you had you know Coach Grow on tonight, and um, he you know, he just really does a great job with. Helping with the, the passing game essentially, and um, and then defensive wise, helping with the defensive secondary, helping Coach Adams, our defensive coordinator. Um, and Coach Adams always comes in week in week out, extremely well prepared. And so we again, we have a really great staff that um, really really drives that and, and helping us you know push for the victory, and along with obviously um, you know great leadership as well. You mentioned that about having them. Um, you know, bringing back a lot of great people and the staff and the, and the student athletes have done just a great job. How do you mentor your players after a win versus a loss? Well, wow, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> I think you kind of, it's one of those situations when you're in season, um, you know, you're still fighting, um, going through games one through ten. Um, you know, after a win, you're, you're celebratory with them, right? But you try not to get um, so high on a victory that you'll forget about the preparation. You know, you let them enjoy it that Friday night. You let them enjoy it that Saturday morning. And once they get to, when you do the film session on Saturday mornings, and then when you get to Monday's practice, it's like, okay, guys, now it's time to move on. Here's what we've learned over the weekend through film study as a staff. Um, they have everything on huddle for them to, to view. A lot of times they're, you know, messaging us about, Coach, when's the film going to be uploaded of our next opponent? And, you know, so they, uh, you know, that's what you do to, when you have a loss, you try not to get too down on the team, uh, really not down at all as far as just, you, you try to be kind of celebratory in the way that they competed. You know, as long as they played the game the right way, um, you really try to go in and, 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 and basically try to lift them up and point out the positives. There's one of those, situ it's one of those situations, there's an old saying that when you, when, you, when you win a game, you're never as good as you think you are when you watch the film and then, when you lose a game, you're never as bad as you think you, you were in that game. And, um, you know, I think that happened a couple weeks ago when we were at uh, Westerville Central for a quad scrimmage with Westerville Central, Marion Franklin, and Biblona. And, you know, I think we kind of, as coaches, you know, the players realized, hey, we came out here and we competed against some big schools with, that were very talented and we've never seen these schools before. So, and they, we came in there and, and I think, you know, we, um, had to kind of earn a little respect because of, you know, coming from where we come from and, um, you know, people in, in Central Ohio tend to just worry about, you know, the OCC, right? And so they're like, hey, you know, you come into that huge chill coffee and, and so our, I think our kids really showed them, you know, they, they went out and they competed hard. And as a staff, we, I think we kind of said, hey, we came out of it for the most part, you know, injury free and that's the best thing you want. We got some great film out of it. We look at the film and you know, we're texting as a staff that Saturday night saying, hey, you know, I think we're going to be all right because our kids just really went toe-to-toe -to -toe with these guys and took them on. So, um, you know, again, it's a situation where, hey, it's not like we went up there and scored 20 touchdowns, but, you know, at the same time, we played good defense. We moved the ball at times. We scored several touchdowns and um, got a lot of great work, so. Yeah, when, did the, when the players walk out of the locker room onto the field, and through the tunnel, what does it feel like to be walking along the side of them and seeing the community come together to support them? Well, I tell you what, it really gives you goosebumps. You know, as a, as a former you know high school football player myself, I mean, it kind of gives you a little bit of a flashback, and just you know, you see the band lined up, they're getting the crowd going with the fight song and fight song, excuse me, and the, and the cheerleaders lined up, and they're. Um, Revving the crowd up even more. I mean, it's just that's what's really exciting too about this Friday is is you know hopefully everything goes according to plan. Obviously, we're kind of living day by day with this pandemic as we're trying to fight our way out of it. You know, but 
to, to see that, to see some normal, normalcy in that situation is going to be exciting. It always, you know, we, we had a little bit of that in 2020. It was really great even going into the league championship game, you know, even though we didn't have a full capacity crowd, we still had the band there, we still had the cheerleaders. Uh, we had a good crowd. They, they really were loud for not being at capacity. It was a, a, a great, great night. And I think, you know, here on, like, in a couple nights here, it's going to be another, another great one. So. So the varsity game kicks off at 7 p.m. on Friday, August 20th at Hernstein Field. But will there be a JV game the following day? Absolutely. The JV play at 10 a.m. on um, at, at Taze Valley. And um, so we're looking for to see great things at that. We actually have a, a level three slash freshman game on that Monday. And that's at Taze Valley as well. And that starts at 5 p.m. on Monday. Uh, how does one get tickets to the game? So if you um, contact our athletic director, and the email is uh, newt, and that's k-n-u-t-e dot bonner at ccsd.us. If you, if you um, email him, um, they'll get you some reserve tickets, but you can also show up on the game night. I believe that they're actually only taking um, cards on the night, so you either have to reserve the tickets through the athletic office, or you have to show up with your credit card ready to go because they're trying to use um, as much cash as possible to you know, stop all the um, you know hand-to-hand -hand contact. Mm -hmm. All right, Coach Pryor, thank you for your time and good luck this Friday. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. It's been a pleasure to come on with you. Well, that'll do it for this week. For the Cavaliers Coach's Corner, I'm Ryan Bloom. And I'm Gracie Bethel. We would like to give a special thanks to our production staff, Alexis Carroll and Justin Dunham. Until next time.